I know I'm weird, but like I had this whole thing of like, I don't want to be in the bathroom peeing at a urinal and have somebody trying to tell me how much they like my show. You know, like I just, I'd rather pee in private. P-P-Q plus. Uh, all right. So, uh, first of all, how are you guys? Uh, I know I haven't seen you guys over here, uh, on this channel in a while. So, uh, hopefully you can understand that, uh, I was just really going, you know, full speed ahead on that Dreamcast launch video. So I just didn't have time for, you know, live streaming or, you know, I really want to make the next flashback, but I know it's going to be kind of a big episode, but, um, you guys know that I just got back. Well, some of you probably know, at least that I just got back from, uh, uh, my first convention, I went to uh, a video game con all the way over in New Jersey, which is pretty far. And, uh, you know, I brought back some stuff and I just figured that I could do sort of like a, uh, you know, I'll probably call this video something like, you know, after action report of video game con or something like that. I don't really know. But um, but anyway, I thought it would be cool. I'll talk about the con and I'll, I didn't really come home with that much stuff. But uh, and where, oh, here it is. Hold on. Sorry, I just got to make sure I have my stuff together. Um, I'll hang these over here. Okay. Uh, so, oh, but so the other thing is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of uh, pull the mail uh, into this episode. I don't have too terribly much mail uh, to show, but if I don't show it now, then when will I? So, uh, so we're going to do that first real quick. I just got uh, a few postcards and then I got one package. Uh, the, the postcards have really been kind of slowing down lately, which is, which is fine. Uh, so real quick, first we have here, um, did I show this one already? I could swear I showed this one already. Maybe. I don't know. If I showed some of these already, uh, I apologize. I can't, I can't keep my head straight anymore. Uh, did I show this one from, uh, Moose Jaw Pizza Company? Moose Jaw Pizza Company. This is from Christopher in, uh, Rockford, Illinois. So, um, yeah, Moose Jaw. I don't know. I that's not a real moose, uh, on that car. Um, oh, by the way, every, every postcard I showed today has been responded to, although, uh, two of them I only responded to today. So I feel kind of bad about that, but, uh, see next here. Um, this is from Adam. We've gotten a postcard. We've gotten multiple things actually before from, uh, from Adam. Adam now lives, I guess, in Louisville, Kentucky, but, uh, he's actually from, uh, the central Valley here of California. So, uh, so yeah. And um, earlier, he says earlier he was playing Dragon's Curse in the Turbo Graphics. That's pretty awesome. Um, well, anyway, uh, I don't really know what this is supposed to be uh, a postcard of. It just says all dressed up and ready to go to the grocery. So I don't know. Uh, next, I got one here. This one was from Pittsburgh, but I forgot. Yeah, Peter. Uh, oh, yeah, that Peter. Yeah. Um, this guy comments in a lot of my videos, so I think follows me on Twitter. So, uh, we got this card from Peter in Pittsburgh and he sent me a sticker with a uh, pickle on it. So that's, um, pickles from Peter in Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah. So I sent Peter back a sticker. I figured we would trade stickers. So hopefully, um, hopefully you got that Peter and, uh, thank you. Uh, next from, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh yeah. See, I know for sure. Uh, I forgot to show this one on the last episode. I felt really bad about that. Um, so this is from, uh, Evan, Evan in, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. And I'm going to have to cover up, uh, his name here or his address rather. Uh, well here first the front, I mean, it's just a postcard from, see, these are the kind of postcards I like just cause it's from where he's from, you know? Uh, well, I mean, I like all postcards. I'm not complaining, but, um, it's just a cool postcard. Uh, but on the back was the cool part. He drew me some art. I love fan art, obviously. And so get this all covered up here. So uh, there you go. That is uh, Mario slash me. Uh, what, that's the Tanuki suit, right? Yeah, that's a Tanuki suit. Uh, but you see Mario's got uh, the old CA hat on. So um, that's pretty cool. My wife says that I should scan like all of this fan art and like make some kind of collage with it. She was saying I should make a postcard out of fan art to send out to people, but uh, I don't know. I feel like I, I would have to get permission from like everybody that um, everybody that drew me some fan art. And then, uh, so this is a postcard I got a while back, and I just barely responded to it today. This is from uh, either Jamie or Jaime. I don't know how you say your name 
in Milford, Connecticut. And uh, Jamie's letting me know, or Jaime is letting me know, that uh, I will be uh, meeting him and a friend of his at uh, the Retro World Expo, which is in about three weeks. I'll be there uh, in Connecticut uh, with Corey from My Life in Gaming. We'll be hanging out. And um, I assume Mark is going to be there, too. I don't really know. But uh, he made this postcard. He says here he designed the postcard. And apparently Connecticut is known for its lobster rolls. Uh, that I did not know. I've never had a lobster roll. Uh, but you can see that it's also sort of Sonic the Hedgehog uh, themed. So uh, so that's pretty awesome. So thank you. And then just yesterday, I got this last postcard. And uh, this is from a guy who calls himself Sarge. Uh, he gave his real name for the address, but he signed it Sarge. So we're going to say Sarge. And uh, he said, I'm hoping this is your first postcard from Russia. And I'm pretty sure that I mean, somebody else can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we've gotten a postcard from uh, from Russia yet. Now, just uh, full disclosure, Sarge lives in Washington, D.C., uh, but he sent this postcard from Russia. See, it's got Russian stamps all over the back because uh, he was there uh, visiting. So uh, so that's pretty awesome. And then I mentioned that we got uh, the one uh, one package. And but that package did come with a postcard. So I'm going to show uh, just, you know, both. Uh, he sent me a nice note. And uh, so his name is Gary. This is Gary from Seattle, uh, Seattle, Washington. Uh, is there another Seattle? I don't really know. Uh, sent me this really nice, very picturesque uh, Seattle postcard. But, uh, oh, and this was kind of funny. He said here that uh, uh, I went all over Frankfurt slash Berlin looking for Kraftwerk albums uh, in, well, I can't read that. I think what he was saying was he was trying to find the albums in English, you know. Oh, yeah, he was saying he was looking for the albums in English, and I was looking for the albums in German. So that was pretty funny. But but this was actually a package, as I said. He actually sent me three games. Uh, and these were pretty cool. I had no idea this was coming. So this was just like a really cool surprise to get at the post office. So it was these three uh, Mega Drive games. And he says, he said in his note here, uh, I hope you're well. I'm well, thank you. Uh, I saw these games when I was in Denver for work and thought you might like them. You know, I used to get to go and travel for work a lot, and I used to always raid all the video game stores at um, uh, any city that I went to. And that's one of the things I really miss about that job. But uh, anyway, so we got three Mega Drive games. These are all Japanese Mega Drive games. We got uh, Super Monaco GP, which, um, uh, you know, has the manual and the cartridge there. You know, the Japanese Mega Drive games always had such way better artwork. Um, you know, the front artwork is okay, but but look at the artwork on the back. Like, how awesome is that? So, it's funny, because, like, the driver that looks like Ayrton Senna, but then that, that uh, the helmet looks more like Gerhard Berger's helmet. Maybe they were trying to do a mashup of the two McLaren drivers. Uh, and then the second one... Uh, well, it's easy because it's the sequel. We got Dierton Senna's Super Monaco GP2. Sorry, that was too close. And um, here's the back of that one. And, uh, you know, same thing. So that's pretty awesome. And then last, uh, we got F1 Grand Prix, which uh, I'm not familiar with this game, but uh, looking at the screenshots in the back, I don't know if you'll be able to see those, but uh, it reminds me a lot of like the F1 Circus games on uh, on the PC engine. So, um, yeah, I don't know for a fact that that it's made. This was made by Very Company. I don't think that's who made the, the F1 Circus games, but I wouldn't swear to it. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much, Gary. Uh, these are awesome. I don't I don't really collect. Uh, Japanese Mega Drive games, uh, not because I have a problem with them, but where am I going to get those? So it's cool to have a few to uh, to add to the shelf. So I really appreciate that. Uh, so anyway, uh, to get to sort of the main event or whatever, uh, I just figured I would talk a little bit about going to this uh, convention. So uh, as I said before, this is the first convention I've ever gone to, you know, as like a YouTube person uh, or or whatever, you know, uh, I kind of figured, you know, I mean, the, the, the main channel has been pretty popular. Sorry, I'm opening a bottle of water uh, for a couple of years now. And so I always kind of wondered, like, why I never got invited to conventions. And after a while, I just figured, well, it must be up to me to ask to go to a convention 
which I just didn't really feel comfortable doing. So I just figured, well, I guess I'm not going to conventions. Uh, and then uh, within a pretty short span of time uh, this summer, I got invited to three that are all sort of this fall or winter. And uh, so this this one I just went to is called uh, AVGC or a video game convention in uh, New Jersey. This year it was in Parsippany, New Jersey. And it was actually the last convention that I got invited to, but it was just the first convention that uh, that I ended up, you know, that was scheduled first. So the, the one that I got invited to first, I'm going to last. And the one I got invited to last, I went to first. And I thought I had, oh yeah, I do here. I've got the, um, here's like the, this was the card from it. You see they have the dog from Duck Hunt there. And uh, I, so I said this, I did a Q&A panel uh, at this convention. And so I already said this there, but I'm just kind of saying it again. Uh, the main reason that I went to this convention was that uh, the person that, that asked me was uh, one of the organizers, obviously. His name is Dave Crossan. And uh, a lot of people don't know this. Like if, you, if you're even still familiar with Classic Game Room, which was at one time, I think, the most popular retro gaming channel on YouTube. Uh, that was a long time ago, though. Um, that started off years earlier, before YouTube. Uh, they were like the very first ever, like, internet video game show. They started in 1999. And back then it was Mark Bustler, but he did it uh, with Dave Cross, and they founded the show together. So, uh, And that show was like a huge uh, influence on me uh, to start my own show. And so to have Dave be the one inviting me to that convention uh, was a pretty huge honor. And so I actually, I even grabbed another one of these cards and I don't know how well you can see that, but I actually got him to sign it. Uh, like I, I brought a bunch of Sharpies with me so I could sign stuff for people. And so I just, I grabbed a Sharpie in this and I made him sign it. So, uh, so that was pretty cool. And uh, so I, I left, I flew out to the convention on, uh, on Friday. Uh, you know, I, I have to fly across the country. So like I have to get up super early. Like the, the flight was at seven. Uh, and it was supposed to get me there about 12 hours later, but so, you know, I had my stuff packed. I, uh, I had a checked bag cause I, I took a bunch of camera stuff and stuff like that. And I don't want to be carrying that around. So I just, I packed it all into a bag that I could check. And so all I had on me was I had my backpack that had like my computer in it. And cause I had a presentation for the show I had to work on and, uh, it had like a camera in my backpack, but just one that I use, uh, I don't. I don't have it up here, but it, you know, it's just a camera for taking pictures, you know, that, uh, I wanted to take with me. And then I had this black plastic poster tube, uh, that, you know, you would roll up a poster and put it in it. You know, I, I use it for work if we're going to like a, you know, a science can, uh, a conference and you're going to present a poster, you put it in this tube. And so I borrowed it from work, uh, cause I had a classic gaming quarterly banner made up like a nice vinyl banner. And I put that in the tube. And, uh, so, you know, I get to the airport, I, I can never sleep the night before I have to get on an airplane. I don't, I don't know why I get all stressed out. I'm not like afraid of flying. I just, I hate all the stress involved with the whole process. And, uh, so I couldn't sleep. So I, I get to the airport, you know, and you have to go through security and it's like, I gotta take my shoes off. I gotta take my belt off. I have to like un, un, unload all my pockets. Uh, I have to take my jacket off, but that has to go in a separate bin. And so I had like five things going through the, the x-ray machine. I had my backpack. I had, you know, the bin with my shoes, the bin with my jacket, the bin with my electronics and my poster tube. And there was some kind of weird commotion, like a whole, like, you know, some lady had to be like strip searched. And so I had to wait a really long time to go through the, you know, the machine where you have to go like this. Like I didn't even, they finally gave up and I just went through the other thing where you just walk through and I get to the other side and I always hate that because you're, you're trying to grab all your stuff, you know, and you're trying to put the stuff you had to take out of your backpack back into your backpack and put your stuff in your pockets and at least kind of put your shoes on so that you're not walking around their disgusting floor with your stocking feet, put your belt back on. And it's so stressful because there's all these people waiting behind you because they want to do the same thing. And so I'm just trying to grab everything and go. And, and so finally I do that and I, I get on the airplane and it was like a two stage flight. So it took me about three quarters of the way to my first stop when I realized that I didn't have my poster tube anymore. So uh, I like I left my banner at the at the airport uh, here in Sacramento. So uh, luckily I was able to call 
the the TSA here in Sacramento when I got uh, to my first, the end of the first leg of the journey, which was actually in Phoenix, Arizona, which really is not on the way to New Jersey, but uh, I called and they set it aside for me. So I got it. I have it back now. Thank goodness. And thank goodness I didn't leave my backpack. That would have been really stupid. Um, but then I get there. I haven't even eaten anything yet because by now it's like 1030 in the morning or well, no, it's not. But when I left at seven, it would have been about 930 in the morning and I haven't eaten anything yet. So like I go to, so they had like a sit down restaurant in the airport and I had, you know, an hour and a half to kill. So I figure I'll go sit there and they, you know, I ordered like this breakfast that was, it was really disgusting and I'll eat anything, but the, the breakfast was gross. There was a dead bug in my water. It was just terrible. And I was planning on sitting there for a while with my computer and working on my presentation. And finally, I just want, I, you know, I ate what I wanted to eat and, and whatever, and just, I wanted to get out of there. But before I even got out of there, I got like a text message from the airline saying that my flight was being delayed like four hours. And so like that sucks because uh, that's not really a good airport to have to spend four or five hours in. But uh, I had no choice. So, uh, you know, I did what I had to do and killed time for four or five hours, which really only sucked because I hadn't slept the night before. And I just wanted to get on the airplane to New Jersey and just fall asleep. Um, so that was annoying. And then uh, so finally we got to get on the airplane. That was a long story. But finally we got to get on the airplane. And, you know. Uh, I'm walking to my seat, you know, this it was, I flew Southwest airlines, which for anybody who doesn't know this, there's no assigned seating. You, you have to board in a particular order. So if you have a better boarding number, you can choose like a pretty good seat. If you have a really bad boarding number, you're going to sit, you know, in a middle seat way in the back or something. But, uh, I had a good boarding number or whatever, a reasonable one. So, but I'm getting on the plane and there's like this old lady, like standing in the middle of the aisle, you know, and she has like her roller bag in front of her. And she's kind of doing like one of these where she's like, she's like looking at the bag. And then, and then she's like looking up at the overhead compartment and like looking down at the bag and looking up at the overhead compartment, you know, and I'm just like, uh, you know, can I help you with that? Oh yes. Thank you. And like, I reach down to, to grab her bag. And first of all, it's an odd angle, right? Because the, they make those aisleways so skinny. So I'm kind of having to turn like, you know, turn at the waist and like reach down and pick up this bag. And I don't know if she was like taking her brick collection to like the, the brick collector's convention or something, but I'm trying to lift this thing up. And I swear like Southwest doesn't weigh people's bags or she never would have been allowed to bring it on the airplane. But for whatever reason, I'm just, it's not like I physically can't lift it. And so I just like, you know, I just wrestle that thing up and I stick it in the overhead bin and, and even then I could barely get it, in, but whatever I get it in there. And she's like, Oh, thank you. You know, fine, whatever. And and I went and sat in my chair or whatever, and just thought nothing more of it. Um, you know, I put on, I put on some earbuds and, and like fell asleep and I don't get to New Jersey until like 1130 at night. And then I have to wait forever for my bag to come out. Cause it was a, you know, it's a big airport. So it takes longer. Like when I, when I fly home, my bag is usually at the carousel before I'm there. Cause it's a small airport. But I have to wait. I wait forever for the bag to show up. Uh, and then I have to go wait for an Uber, which I think I waited like a half an hour for the Uber just because even though it was like almost midnight now, like traffic at the passenger pickup is just totally jammed up. And so like I didn't get to my hotel until like almost one o'clock in the morning. But of course, for me, it feels like 10 o'clock at night, right? Because of the three hour time change. And uh, so I had a hard time. I didn't fall asleep until like two o'clock in the morning, uh, which only sucked because I had to set an alarm for like eight. Cause I'm thinking like, Hey, I got to get my butt to this convention. And, uh, so I set the alarm for eight. I wake up at eight and I swear I couldn't move. Like my back hurt. This is why I told the story about the old lady. My back hurt so badly. I couldn't even get out of bed hardly. Like, and once I did, I couldn't even stand up straight. And I just, at first I didn't, I'm, you know, cause I'm still tired. I'm like, how could this have happened? I, to me, I was like, Oh, I must've slept wrong. But I soon realized that this was not something that would happen because you slept wrong. So but, you know, I just felt like, well, what can I do? You know, so I just went, I took a hot shower and was just trying to like spray hot water on that part of my back for as long as I could, you know, because the whole time I'm just thinking like, oh my, cause I ended up kind of laying in bed a little bit longer. Right. Cause I'm trying to, you know, at this point, I don't, I don't appreciate the gravity of the situation, you know? So I just figure like, well, let me just lay here in a different position or do a little bit of stretching and I'm sure I'll be fine. But, uh, but I wasn't fine. But so I, I just felt like, well, I, I better go because you know, I, where we were, where I was staying was where the convention was having everybody stay who was coming from out of town. 
And so earlier in the morning, I, I heard a lot more commotion outside and then it was like all gone. And it made me feel like, oh my God, everybody's at the convention and I'm not there. And, you know, so I, I went ahead, I texted, I texted Dave cause I wasn't even sure how I was supposed to get to the convention. Oh, that's an important point. Usually these conventions are like in hotel conference centers so that you're just sleeping in the same hotel where the convention is happening. But uh, that wasn't the case here. Like the, the convention was taking place at like a community center and the hotel was like a mile away, which I mean, is no big deal, but I don't think it, nobody ever told me that until I got there. And then I didn't realize like, how am I supposed to get, like, is it okay to take Uber? Or is someone going to pay me back? I don't know. So, so I texted Dave and asked him and, and he said, oh, well, you can take Uber, but I'll just come get you. So, oh, okay, great. So I go outside, he comes and gets me, we go to the convention and I'm just like, oh my God, I, I feel like I'm running late, you know, cause the convent, like early bird or something was starting at like nine 30 and I was just barely getting there at nine 30 or 10. And I get there and there's like, no, like YouTube wise, like nobody else is there yet. And so I just felt like, ah, dang it. Like I, if I could have laid down in the bed longer, I would like to have done that. But, uh, but anyway, I get there and, and, you know, it sucked. I didn't have my banner, but you know, he showed me, there was like a little table. There's like a row of tables along a wall. And that was for like all of the YouTube people. And so like in order, it was like next to the door was like Bob from Retro RGB, then Smoke Monster, then me, then some guy called uh, Some Call Me Johnny. I, I, don't, I never heard of him, but I mean, he has like 400,000 subscribers. So, I mean, as far as that metric goes, he was the most popular by far out of any of us. I just, you know, if I say I've never heard of a YouTuber, that is more of a reflection of me than them. Um, but anyway, so it was him and then Adam Koralik. So I was kind of in the middle and there was five of us, but nobody else was there yet. So I felt kind of dumb, but at the same time, it meant that I felt like I could kind of walk around the show floor a little bit and, uh, and check out vendors. And then eventually, you know, smoke monster did show up. Uh, he wasn't like late or anything. I was just, I was just like, you know, I get all like worried about stuff like that. And so I just ended up getting there like earlier than I needed to. But uh, anyway, you know, I was really looking forward, you know, I don't know any, I didn't know Bob. Uh, I don't know Adam. Uh, you know, I know Dave, I guess. I mean, I want to know him now. I didn't really know him yet. Plus he was busy. And so I just wanted like Smoke Monster to hurry up and get there. Cause he was like the only person that I kind of knew. And I just kind of figured like, I know he's a nice guy. I just figured, well, as long as I have Smoke Monster, I have somebody to talk to. Um, but anyway, he showed up and I, I was talking to him, but you know, then of course, like, you know, uh, f f not a lot, but you know, fans of my show were showing up and talking to me and I was signing stuff, which was really cool. Uh, so I didn't get to talk to smoke monster like too much. Uh, and then, uh, Bob came, Bob came later, I guess Bob lives there, but he was like driving in from the city. So, you know, it took him a while to get there, which is understandable. Uh, and then, so, you know, like in the middle of the afternoon, I think I had to give a talk. Uh, Oh, one cool thing though, Tommy, anybody who's a show regular knows, uh, uh, Tommy, or he goes by two Kings, uh, on YouTube, you know, usually Tommy can't make it to the live streams cause they were on Tuesdays. But anyway, uh, Tommy was there like for the day. So like he hung out, he hung out at the booth a lot and we talked, but you know, he would, you know, he'd disappear for a while and go walk around. Or if I didn't have anybody else trying to talk to me, like me and Tommy would go do stuff together. Uh, super cool guy. And one thing I wanted to say about Tommy is, uh, his beard trimming game is uh second to none. So I, I, you know, I was trying not to make it obvious, but I'm kind of like checking out like how he's got his beard trimmed and everything because it looked really cool. Um, but yeah, you know, we took selfie together and stuff. But, uh, you know, just just an example of somebody who's like a super stand up guy online and I got to meet him in person and hang out with him. And he's the exact same guy, which is awesome. Uh, so then I, I did this Q&A panel. I don't know when it, what time it was at. Let's just say it was at 1230. I did a Q&A panel. Uh, there was like, I don't know, maybe like 20 people there. It wasn't that big of a deal. It, it really kind of seemed like not a lot of people came to this convention that really gave a crap about any of us YouTube people, including Famous Guy. Uh, and the, the the people that did come visit Famous Guy, let's just say there's not a lot of overlap between like my audience and his audience. But uh, but yeah, so I don't know, like I, maybe 15, 20 people came to my Q&A and there were some good questions, you know, but, and I I did record it. But, you know, you got to remember, I was running on like no sleep and I, I don't know. I just kind of felt like I was, I don't know, you know, I worry about that stuff too much, but I felt like some of my answers were weird and the footage looks crappy. So I, I don't know. I, I'm probably not going to upload it. We'll see. It, you're not missing anything, honestly. It's really nobody asked me any questions that you haven't heard the answer to before. So uh, it was really no big deal. But um, 
but it was just cool. It was cool being there. It was cool having people come up to the booth, you know, people that were introducing themselves because they're people that I sort of know from Twitter or from the live streams, uh, people that I don't know who they are, who were just wanted to tell me they enjoyed the show. I appreciated that. I, I brought a bunch of postcards because I just use those as a thing that I could sign and give back, you know, or give out for free. And then, you know, I had like stickers and stuff for sale. But uh, but I did get to do some walking around on Saturday and uh, and I bought some stuff, uh, which I'll wait and show that when I'm done talking about the convention, I guess. But um, but then, yeah, then like so Sunday, I, you know, came back on Sunday. Sunday, I, I kind of had a better feel for things. So I didn't come Sunday until like later. Sunday was a much more quiet day. It seems like most people that wanted to come to the convention came on Saturday. Uh, so Sunday was a little bit quieter as far as the sort of the show floor goes. Um, uh, Bob gave a talk. Was that Saturday or Sunday? No, I can't. They kind of run together. Bob, you know, retro RGB, Bob gave a great talk, uh, about, you know, how to get the best, how did he call it? How to get the best experience out of playing your home systems. Cause he was kind of making the point that, you know, playing your systems over RF or composite on a CRT is a perfectly fine experience. Like that's how we all played it back in the day. But so he was talking about that and like, Hey, just get yourself a free CRT all the way up to like, you know, here's an OSSC hooked up to like a, you know, flat screen. So, uh, it was a cool presentation. Uh, I guess that I just can't remember it. No, I think that was on Saturday. Was it? I don't remember. Uh, and then Sunday, Sunday smoke monster gave a talk, but I didn't. So I, I was giving a talk right after smoke monster. And so I was trying to kind of go over my slides. Uh, cause of course, you know, I made a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so I didn't go to smoke monsters talk, which I felt bad about, but I just want to make sure I was ready to go for, for my thing. And uh, the the talk that I gave was just sort of a like a PowerPoint presentation about the launch of the Dreamcast, because, of course, I had just uploaded that video two days earlier. And uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, Bob helped me out uh, recording uh, my he, like he the camera that I'm on right now. He was using that to to record the show. And then a guy here, I have his name here, a guy named Ranny, not Randy, Ranny. Uh, he had his camera, he had like a really nice Panasonic GH4. And he also recorded my entire talk from like a different angle. And then I was, I had mic'd myself up with my lav mic. So um, that I am planning on probably uploading, but to this channel, not the main channel. So uh, yeah, I don't know what else really happened on Sunday. We went out for drinks Saturday night. That was cool. Uh, I only had like one beer. I just, I wanted to go home, not home, but you know, it, I felt bad. Like my back was killing me. Like the, my back still hurts. Uh, but now it's manageable, but this time it really was, it was very bad. And, and I was on like no sleep. And so I, I really just want to go back to my hotel room and go to bed, but it's like how often, you know, I don't get any chances to like hang out with other YouTube people. So, you know, if like smoke monster and Bob want to go out for a beer, like what, I'm going to go back to my hotel instead. Like that's lame. So I went out with them, but then I was pretty thankful to, I didn't get back to my hotel to like 10 30 and then I just sacked out. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the next day was really, was really more the same. Uh, the next day I got to meet, uh, Dustin, uh, I don't want to say your last name on camera, but Dustin is also like, you know, a, a show regular Dustin has sent me a, a postcard. I got to meet him. Uh, and then Sam, uh, I guess it's okay to say your name cause it's also your YouTube name. It's, um, Sam Rivera films. Uh, he had told me he was coming and he showed up and again, just, you know, these are all just like salt of the earth people, you know, just what a nice guy. And, uh, we went, uh, Sam and I went into the game room and played some two player, uh, together. We ended up playing what we, it took me a minute to figure out that it was metal slug X that we were playing. I haven't played metal slug in a while, so I'm rusty on which one's which, but, uh, but that was pretty fun. And, uh, and then at like three, I don't know, it was two forty five. I forgot when I went and I gave my dreamcast talk and a lot more people came to that. So, uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I think that overall went pretty well. I think I had a little bit more energy that day. Well, you'll see when I upload the video. Hopefully it was okay. It's not, you know, the video I uploaded, you know, the real video is much better. But I guess, you know, if you had been at the show, maybe it would have been cool to come see me give that talk. So, uh, and then, and after that Sunday night, you know, Bob had to go uh, home. So he didn't get to hang out on Sunday night. So me and Smoke Monster and Dave, the organizer, we all went out and had a quick beer uh, and then I went and got dinner. I didn't realize this the first day there was a Dunkin Donuts literally right next to my hotel. It's so weird over there. Like the whole place where my hotel was felt like a little residential neighborhood. And like there was a strip mall right next to the hotel and you never, you couldn't really see it from the hotel. And it's not the kind of area where you would have expected a strip mall to be. 
but there was an Italian place in there and there was a Dunkin' Donuts. So I went over there and got a coffee and I ended up getting like spaghetti and meatballs from the Italian place, but I wasn't even really hungry. I just wanted to try it. So I only ate a little bit of it anyway. Uh, and then, so on Sunday though, uh, Bob had invited smoke monster and I to go to his apartment, uh, in New York city on Monday morning, uh, to, he wanted to show smoke monster some stuff and he was going to get us bagels and like it, it, it would have been cool. Um, but then I, we were thinking like, how are we going to get there? You know, and there's not really from where we were, the only viable option was Uber, which first of all, would be very expensive. And second of all, you're talking about like Monday morning rush hour traffic into Manhattan. So that would have been pretty crappy. And then my flight was leaving New Jersey at three o'clock. So I needed to be at the airport at like one. So really we would have only been at Bob's place for like 90 minutes or something. So it just didn't really make sense. Uh, so we ended up not doing that, which I felt bad. It's kind of a missed opportunity. But uh, what was cool is that what we did instead, um, one place I've just always wanted to go is the Digital Press Video Game Store in Clifton. Uh, I was a member of the Digital Press Forums like back in like 2004. And when they opened that store, I just like, you know, I thought like, oh, it'd be so great if someday I got to go to the Digital Press stores to check it out. But, you know, I didn't think that was ever going to happen. But because, you know, when am I ever in that area? And like if I go on vacation with my wife to New York City, that's kind of a tough sell. Like, hey, honey, you know, what do you think about, you know, you go around the city for your, you know, by yourself for a while and I'm going to go all the way out to North Jersey uh, so I can go to a video game store. Like, you know, the thing is, my wife would have let me do it, but it's just like one of those things where you don't even really want to ask. Uh, so anyway, um, I guess that's the end of the stories I want to tell. But uh, I'm going to show I got some stuff at the convention and then I got some stuff. Not a lot. Uh, at, uh, the, uh, the digital press store, which was exciting. I also, I, you know, smoke monster took some pictures of me in front of the store, but they, they didn't really come out that great. It's my fault. I, you know, I have a viewfinder camera. So you look through a viewfinder instead of like looking through the lens or whatever. And I didn't explain to him how to use it. And so it, they got kind of cropped a little bit too much, but it's my fault for not, uh, for not telling him. And, and to his credit, he was standing in traffic trying to take my picture. So, you know, he was putting his life on the line. Um, but so anyway, uh, whatever. So, uh, so first I'm just going to show the stuff I got at the show, which again, none of this is like a big deal. So if, if you're waiting like, oh, maybe he got like, you know, Musha or earthbound, uh, I didn't get anything like that. So this stuff is really not super exciting from that perspective, but some of it's just stuff that I was looking for. It's the kind of thing I collect. So, uh, so first, uh, I got, so they had like, there was one of the vendors had like a box full of demo discs and they all just said one dollar and uh so i grabbed a bunch so they're all saturn related so i got sega screams volume one demo disc uh which says that it has uh playable three dirty dwarves bug two daytona usa uh circuit championship edition virtual on and baku baku uh and then it's got like five non-playable demos which if you can't play it who cares uh, and then this one, uh, Sega Saturn bootleg sampler. And uh, this one doesn't say actually what, um, maybe it says in the disc. No. So this doesn't say what, what it has on it. Uh, when is it from? 95, I guess. So, so, you know, early in the goings. So maybe it's got some of the early games on it. Uh, this is maybe the one that I was most excited about. Uh, I got a Panzer Dragoon uh, demo disc. So, I mean, Panzer Dragoon was a launch game. So, you know, this demo disc must have been from near launch because otherwise, why would they have made it? So um, I don't know if this is the kind of thing that was maybe given out at a video game store or something. I don't know how one would have gotten this. Um, my friend Alex, who is the host of Retro Game Squad, says he remembers having this disc, but he couldn't remember uh, how he got it. Uh, and then the last demo disc this isn't even a demo disc. It was just in with the demo discs. I haven't looked up any information about this, so I don't really know um, what its deal is. But it says that Virtua Feeling, Sub Pop and Sega get together. Sub Pop is a record label. And this is full of music. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to... There's not... I don't know if there's really any bands on here that any of you guys would recognize. Uh, the only one I even recognize is uh, Sunny Day Real Estate, which is a pretty cool band. Uh, and then there, this this was in it, this um, 
this little insert, which is just an order form. But it's an order form. It's an order form to buy music, not to buy um, Sega stuff. So I don't, you know, it has a Saturn logo uh, on the back right there. So I don't know if this is something that came with the Saturn somehow. If anybody knows, I, I'd be, like I said, I haven't even tried to look it up. So maybe the information's out there and I just don't know about it. But if anybody has any information off the top of their head about this disc, uh, please feel free to, uh, to enlighten me. And then uh, this was not a dollar. I'm sure I probably overpaid for this. This was 10 bucks. But um, this was from the same table. So this is Virtua Fighter Remix, but do I have Virtua Fighter Remix? Actually, I might not, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, the reason I wanted this is this is the cardboard sleeve version of Virtua Fighter Remix. And you can see on the top there, it says promotional copy, not for resale. And uh, I mentioned this in the Sega Saturn launch episode. Uh, if you bought a Sega Saturn at or near launch, and got Virtua Fighter as the pack-in game, uh, if you registered your system, they sent you this when they made the game because they felt like the original Virtua Fighter was not like a good enough game. And Remix was, it, it's still Virtua Fighter, but you know, it has like uh, uh, more detailed, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, the, the texture mapped polygons, right? Texture mapped polygons, more detailed. Uh, it's just better graphics. And I don't know if they tweaked the gameplay or not, but um, so I don't know when I saw that, it's just, to me, that's a little piece of gaming history. It's not like it's rare or anything, but, uh, I thought it was cool. And like I said, I'm not, I don't have an English copy or an American copy of Virtua Fighter remix, but maybe I, maybe it's among my Japanese games. I, I can't remember anymore. And, uh, then, so this was kind of free. Um, so it's the kind of thing I was walking around the show and I was seeing things that I ended up having to buy. Uh, to do the launch episode, uh, and then you got to, you know, pay the, you know, however much they're charging on eBay plus shipping and everything. And so, like, I had to buy the web browser disc for the Dreamcast because I didn't have it. And uh, so when I saw this, it's just the 2.0 web browser disc. I just figured, you know, I might need this down the line at some point. And the guy had, like, two of them. And so I picked it up and I just asked him, hey, how much do you want for this? And he was like, oh, five bucks. And I was like, you know, I, I don't like to haggle. Like, I don't, to me, that's kind of a jerky thing to do. So I don't usually care for haggling. So I just said, oh, okay, thanks. And I just put it back. And he goes, oh, no, you know, he's like, it's just free. Just take it. And I, I don't, you know, these are like Jersey people. So everything with them is just like, oh, just, just take it. You know, being from California, I'm like, you know, hey, man, it's cool. And so I was like, well, no, I don't. I said, I just, you know, I, can I just give you like two bucks for it? Because to me, two bucks is about what this is worth, right? Because he even admitted, he's like, oh, I have a bunch of those. You know, so of course you do, because, you know. And they're worthless. But I, I wasn't trying to get free stuff. And so I just said, well, can I just, can I please just at least give you $2? Because that's what, that's pretty much the most I was going to pay for it. And so he took the two bucks. Uh, but then when I got it open, um, it, it does have uh, the web browser disk in it. But for whatever reason, uh, it also has this Dreamcast generator disk uh, in it, which I, I didn't know that was going to be in there. Uh, and that's the Dreamcast generator volume two. So the one that I showed on the launch video was uh, Generator Volume One, so um, so that's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure I don't have it. I'm not. I'm not really positive, to be honest with you, um, because actually my Dreamcast probably would have come with Volume Two, but well, I don't want to waste your time looking for it. So anyway, I got those for two bucks. Uh, and then the other thing I got for the Dreamcast, how much did I pay for? I took the stick. I think this was four dollars. Dreamcast games, in my opinion, were very overpriced. Uh, at, at the show. Uh, I was, you know, just because I just made the video, I, I was kind of looking for dream. The main thing I'm looking for is Dreamcast games and Sega Genesis games. And so there were piles of Dreamcast games everywhere and which was exciting. But then I, I would look at the prices and just, I, you know, I don't, to be fair, like I don't keep up with prices. And so like, I'm not saying their prices weren't fair, but I'm saying they're way more than I was going to pay. And like some of the games, you know, that I saw, I had already purchased off of eBay because I needed them for the for the show, you know, the launch games, and it seemed like the prices at the show were not very competitive. Um, but then this, so this is not a big deal at all. But I got uh, NHL 2K, uh, just because it, it kind of made me want to get the 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 2K games uh, after talking about NFL 2K. And uh, I don't know where I have it here, but I actually went. Uh, I don't know where it is. It, it doesn't matter. Um, I actually went to a video game store a couple weeks ago and I got uh, NBA 2K from them, along with some other stuff. But but anyway, 
Uh, and then the last two things that I got here are both Genesis games. Uh, the first one, uh, if you watched, I did the video about, you know, my Genesis collection. It was called, like, Are My Genesis Games in a Weird Order or whatever. Uh, I mentioned how much I like the Accolade games, well, Accolade slash Ballistic games. The unlicensed Genesis games that came in sort of the PC-style boxes. And so I found uh, Test Drive 2 The Duel, which, uh, again, it's just a racing game. It's not a big deal. Like I said, I didn't buy any games that are like, ooh. Uh, but I just, I saw this. And, you know, the trick with these games is finding a nice, complete copy. The, the manuals are usually gone, and any of the other inserts, forget about it. So when I opened this and saw that it came with everything, uh, that was pretty exciting. So, you know, it goes without saying it comes with the cartridge, which is in very nice condition. Uh, it comes with the manual, which is also fine. Uh, if you watch that video that I just referenced, then you already know, you've already seen this but it came with this whole thing of these Accolade promo cards, which uh, is cool. And then something I don't think I've ever seen in Accolade games still have, they all came with a free poster, and the poster is just... I, I don't want to undo the poster. It's literally just this this artwork, but just bigger. But I, you never see these. So that was cool, and it, he had it priced at $9, which to me, especially at a convention, like, you know, pretty much any... Genesis game that's not like an EA Sports game. If it's nine bucks, I think that's a pretty good deal. And um, and while I was paying the guy, he's like, oh, I love your show. I'm a huge fan, which was cool. And uh, and I didn't use that to try and get a cheaper price because people who do that are very scummy. So, uh, but yeah, that guy was cool. I ended up, I went over there the next day. Uh, I gave him a Classic Gaming Quarterly sticker. So, uh, just to say thanks. And then, uh, so this one, uh, I know I just said I don't like to haggle. This one I haggled a little bit because I was literally, I literally bought this when the show was closing on Sunday. And uh, this is a game that I've already featured on the show. Uh, I just don't have a complete copy. Uh, it's just super hang on. Again, it's not that big of a deal, but you know, it's an early Genesis release. It's in really nice condition. It, you know, the the box is great. It's still got the hang tab. Um, it's, you know, the, the manual and the, and the cartridge both look good. And then I didn't know it when I bought it, but it had this whole stack of, uh, you know, loose papers behind the manual with, uh, you know, like continue, uh, codes or whatever passwords. And, um, he had it priced at $18, which I just think for this game is just too much. And I had it along with some ones that I got just from selling stickers uh, I had a five and a 10 in my pocket. So I just asked him if he would take 15, which isn't even really that big of a discount, I guess. I mean, well, it's, you know, it's not bad. It's like 20%, right? Almost. Um, but I just, I felt bad. Cause like the thing is, I don't like haggling to begin with. And then I just feel like if somebody recognizes me, is, is it going to someone? Oh yeah. I saw that guy at this convention and he was trying to like talk down the sellers. You know, I, I worry about that kind of stuff too much, but anyway, um, I was happy to get this. So now I have I have the box or I have the, the game in the manual. So I guess I'm getting rid of those since I have this. Oh, one thing I wanted to say about uh, well, two things. Uh, Dustin, the guy Dustin that I mentioned that I, I met and we hung out for a little while at the show. Um, he went and found a copy of Super Pitfall and and had me sign it because he remembered me saying that that's that how much I hated that game when I got it for the NES, which I just thought that was kind of funny. Uh, and then I got a few more things from the show. Uh, one thing, this was just free. Um, they were giving these out. Uh, old School Gamer Magazine, which it's just a fanzine, but I think that kind of stuff is cool. You know, for some of you that uh, have been around for a while and kind of are more familiar with the history of my show, you know, my show started as a website and my website started as an idea for a fanzine. And so when I see stuff like this, I just think it's cool. Um, what, what I thought was even cooler, though, uh, so I forgot who I'm sorry. Um, I want to say it was Tommy actually, but I'm not positive. Somebody that came by my booth to say hi had this and I asked him where he got it. And he told me, oh yeah, it's, it's in the other room in the back. There's this booth. And, uh, and so I went back there and well, hold on. This story needs visual aids. So I had to go back into the other room and it was kind of like, it was kind of the one part of the convention I hadn't actually really checked out just because it was sort of in the back. And I'm walking back there and uh, I see this booth that has this guy standing at it with a bunch of books. And uh, I realized that one, so one of the books he has a bunch of is this one. 
uh, because it was this guy, Jeff Ryan, he wrote this book, uh, Super Mario, How Nintendo Conquered America, which I already had this book. And I just, I thought, wow, that's cool. I had no idea he was going to be there. So I said, you know, he doesn't know who I am, you know. Uh, he just, he's just an author, but so oh, I have this book already. I use it for research and thanks and whatever. And it was kind of a nice surprise. Um, but he wasn't the guy giving out the magazines. So I went, the, the person, like I said, I think it was Tommy, but I'm just not positive. They said, oh, the guy has a pong, uh, like a pong arcade machine control panel. So you'll be able to see it from that. And so I go back to this booth and I see this big pong control panel sitting there. And then, you know, I saw this magazine, uh, that they were giving out and then, I saw a huge stack of this book, which is uh, Phoenix, the history of the video game industry. And there was a huge stack of them. And I looked at the stack and I looked at the guy and he's like some guy in like his late fifties or something. And I was like, is this you? And he's like, yeah, that's me. And I was like, Hey, I have your book like this. So I don't expect anybody out there to know this, but this is literally the very first ever like proper book about the history of video games. This is the sixth, sorry, fourth. Uh, I was looking at it in the thing there. Uh, this is the fourth edition. So he keeps adding to it uh, because it, it's split up by year. So each chapter, like, you know, here's 2001. There's the Xbox and the Game Boy Advance. But like you see the spine, it's all colored because you just flip to a color and be like, oh, there's 2011. So he keeps adding to it. But I mean, it goes all the way back to like night. Here's 1971, 1972. So, um, you know, because of what I do with my show, uh, it's really a great resource. And I'll tell you, you know what sucks? Uh, I paid about 80 bucks for this book. And uh, and he did have hardcover versions of the book at the show, uh, although they were 70s, so that was a little bit cheaper. But he also had uh, like paperback versions, which is still the same size, it's just paperback. And he wanted like 30 bucks, which uh, I didn't even know you could get a paperback uh, version because you certainly can't get a paperback version on Amazon, or at least you couldn't when I bought that. So I talked to him for a little while. Same thing. He doesn't know about my show, which is fine. I just, you know, I was just telling him how great his book was and blah, blah, blah. It was just a nice surprise because I didn't know uh, that he was going to be there. And then um, I think I was showing that stuff. Well, I didn't have it with me. I think I was telling Sam about that. And he says, oh, you know, there was some other guy back there who had like books about Sega or something. And I was like, I don't, I didn't see, I don't know what you're talking about. And, and there was nobody else at my booth. So I was like, well, come on, just show me. Let's go, you know. And so Sam and I walked over to the other side of the room. And it's funny because I had walked past this guy's booth and I thought he was selling graphic novels because I didn't look that closely. But um, and so Sam, Sam has the distinction of costing me $100 uh, in, in a manner of thinking uh, at the show because I, that's how much I ended up spending at this booth. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the website uh, Hardcore Gaming 101. But uh, that's a, a, a major source of material for my show. Uh, this guy does like these deep dive articles about different like game series. Like he'll do, you know, the whole Gradius series or something like that. And um, it's a great resource for me to use when I'm doing research. And that's whose boot that was. And he wasn't selling graphic novels. He, but you'll see why. I'll show you the covers and you'll see if you just kind of like look by it real quickly, you'd think that's what it was. Um, but he has started taking all these articles that he's writing and putting them into books that you can buy them online too. But, um, so I ended up buying five. So, uh, I got Sega arcade classics volume one, which well, here, let me, let me open one, I guess, so you can at least kind of see it's not, you know, it's got a lot of pictures, but it's got a lot of text too. I mean, like here's, here's, and, and this is exactly what it's like, uh, on his website. So, uh, this is a whole thing about outrun. Oh, there's Space Harrier, and then we get into Outrun. Where's the? F oh, that is the first page. So here it's like Outrun, but you know he's talking about like you know here's what Outrun is like, and here's the thing that, is that you want to know about that. Uh, but then he goes into different different ports of the game, and you know he's got all these screenshots, but you know here's all this text. Uh, it, it's there's a lot of information. So like if I was doing an episode where I was going to talk about Outrun, this is the kind of thing I'd want to read. And he talks there's Battle Outrun. Um, Outrunners, sorry, that's, I'm not doing a good job of holding it up, but, um, it, it's, they're just really good books and I'm not, I'm not trying to shill for the guy. I don't, he didn't give me a deal or anything. I just paid whatever. Um, but they're just really, really good books. So I got, uh, so that's Sega arcade classics volume one. And then I also got, uh, Sega arcade classics volume two. 
And I think, I'm going to say those were about, I think those were 20 bucks a piece. And then if you watch uh, Bithead 1000's show, somebody sent this one to him a couple of years ago, or I don't know how long ago it was, but a while. Uh, the Guide to Shoot 'em Ups, not Shmups, uh, Volume 1. I don't really like Shoot 'em Up either. It should be Shooters. But um, I can understand if you're writing a book, if you put a Guide to Shooters, people are going to misunderstand, uh, even though they shouldn't. Featuring R Type, Thunder Force, Xanak, Musha, The Guardian, Legend, Star Soldier. But when it says Star Soldier, I'm thinking it, that means the entire series, not just Star Soldier. Um, yeah, like the, all the Thunder Force games are in here. Ooh, Insector X. See, I could have used this when I did uh, the Genesis in 1990 because there were so many shooters. Uh, where was I? Glay Lancer, Lords of Thunder. Um, I don't. It's, it's funny. So Bithead says Rax Amber, which I'm sure is not right. Is it Ray Ray Zamber? Ray Zamber? I don't know. Cotton Steel Empire. X Multiply, Image Fight, and Rekka. And um, I don't know, Steel Empire just remind, this reminds me, I saw a copy. It's funny how, how the prices of games change. Uh, I saw a copy of um, Fire Shark, like a complete in the box copy of Fire Shark at the show for 35 bucks, which is a good deal, in my opinion. But I already have it. Uh, Konami Arcade Classics. Sorry. Taito a Arcade Classics. I was getting ahead of myself. Taito Arcade Classics featuring uh, Rostan. Sorry, am I blocking my voice here? Rostan, Ninja Warriors, Dead Connection, New Zealand Story, Elevator Action, Darius, Thunder, Fox, Growl, Night Striker, and many more. And it's funny, the whole way we got started talking about this, I think, is, uh, or no, we didn't, but me and, me and I think it was Sam, yeah, me and Sam were talking about uh, Elevator Action Returns which is an awesome game. And so that's in here because it, when it says elevator action, it does, doesn't just mean that one. It's saying like, it'll be that one and any sequels. And then the last one I got here is uh, Konami shooters. See, then they say shooters. So not shoot 'em ups. Uh, anyway, uh, do, I mean, do I need to read them? I mean, you guys know what the Konami shooters are, right? But I mean, they're all, even all the weird PC engine ones are in here. I mean, what a, see, Bithead needs this book because I know he loves Konami shooters. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, I kind of bought this. I'm like, oh, man, I, now I have to figure out how to even get these home because I didn't have a lot of space in my luggage. But I ended up wrapping these up with something so that they wouldn't get injured. Um, but these are these are getting added straight to the research library, which has now uh, um, grown beyond the shelf that I had set aside for it. Uh, and then uh, the guy that runs that booth slash website and I, we did a sticker swap. So I got an HG 101 sticker. So, um, I think that's it for the show. So, uh, as I said, Monday morning, uh, we got up and, uh, you know, packed all of our crap and ate breakfast. Uh, and then, you know, Smokey and I met up and just shared an Uber and went over to Clifton, which is like a 20 minute ride. It's not far, uh, to go to the digital press store, which like I said, just very exciting. Uh, I didn't really, I really didn't buy a whole lot. So, you know, don't, you don't need to strap yourselves in for this, but I did get, I got a digital press t-shirt, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think and then the back's pretty neat. So the back, so it's supposed to be like a concert t-shirt, right? So the back has all of these video game consoles along with their year of release. So I, it's funny. I wanted to wear this shirt while I was doing the video, but I haven't washed it yet. And I don't like to wear stuff before I wash it. So, um, and that was cool. I mean, we were there for, I took a bunch of pictures. Maybe I'll edit them in here. I took no pictures at the convention, which I don't know why I even did that. I just, I just didn't. Uh, so I have, no, I really don't have any pictures to show except uh, we have, I have one picture of me and Smoke Monster and Dave together and that, that's it. But I did buy a few things there. 
And uh, no, nothing, again, nothing earth shattering, but um, oh, I'll show that last. Uh, in the, they have like a whole bargain bin area and it had demo discs and, you know, I'm like, you know, like a fly on manure. I love demo discs. And I found, uh, uh, one of the official Sega Dreamcast magazine demo discs. It pains me to look at this because I used to have a complete set of these. And because I'm stupid, uh, again, it's before I started my show. Uh, I got rid of all of them. So this one is volume 10 from January of 2001. Uh, the game playable demos, uh, F-355 Challenge, uh, Sega Marine Fishing, Cow the Kangaroo, K.O. the Kangaroo, I never heard of that one, uh, Rainbow Six Rogue Spear, Pod Speed Zone, Speed Devils Online Racing, and Toy Commander Holiday Mission. And then it's got some non-playable demos. And then interestingly, this also has the Dreamcast Web Browser 2.0 uh, thing on it. Uh, this one, this one caught my eye because this is an example of a game that I saw at the show and wanted to buy it, but wasn't going to pay what they were asking. I think this game was like $25 or something like that at the show. Uh, and that's Sega GT for the Dreamcast. Um, it's funny. I, I ended up having to burn a copy of this just because I needed to get the VMU game off so that I could show that in the little segment where I was talking about the VMU. But uh, this game at Digital Press was $7.99. And, um, it's taped closed. I haven't even opened it yet. So, um, hopefully everything, everything appears to be in good condition. Yeah. Even has the little, like, insert papers in it and stuff. So, you know, jewel case is broken. I don't care. I can fix that. But anyway, yeah. So, I mean, eight bucks, man. Uh, that's pretty cool. And then uh, next, so I didn't even know about this game, uh, so I still don't know anything about this game. Uh, they had a bunch of 3DO games, which was pretty cool. And I got uh, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons uh, Slayer uh, game for the 3DO. So it doesn't have the box, but it has the, the manual is just back here. Turned around backwards for whatever reason, because uh, probably it's too thick to fit inside the jewel case. But uh, I was not aware of this game. Maybe it sucks. I don't know. Uh, it was 10 bucks, so it's not like it was free, but um, it was really the only 3DO game there that really caught my eye for the price. So I just figured, I don't know, I like collecting 3DO games. So, And then uh, I got, uh, they had a bunch of these for some reason with the 3DO games. Uh, this is a CD, it's digital press, the first 50 issues. So this is the first 50 issues of the digital press fanzine, like in digital, you know, probably PDF format. And, uh, you know, for as much as I was in the digital press back in the day and was a member of the forums and stuff, for whatever reason, I never signed up for the fanzine because they would actually mail it to you. You could subscribe to it. And, um, and I never did, which seems really stupid in hindsight. And this was still shrink wrapped, so I haven't even opened it and looked at it. But, I mean, there's the disc. Uh, and there's the two guides. I, I do have both of these. Uh, they're game guides. Uh, you know, I mean, they're okay. I think when they came out, it was a lot cooler because a lot of this information was a lot harder to come by. But at this point, you know, I kind of mostly just have them as a, a curiosity or something. But it even says on here, 1991 to 2003. So uh, that's how old digital press is. The first issue came out in 91. That's pretty awesome. For sure, I can think of one person out there who's going to think this is pretty awesome. Uh, and that's Ryan Reinbold. So this is something I've been kind of looking for for a little while. But on eBay, they're just more than I think I'm willing to spend or more than they're worth. Uh, I got a Dreamcast fishing controller. So uh, I picked up a few weeks ago. I, I don't know where it is. You know what it looks like. I picked up a few weeks ago at a video game store, Sega Bass Fishing, which was not a launch game, but it was near launch, maybe like a launch window game. Uh, but I didn't want to play it with the controller because that's kind of lame, uh, the standard controller. And so I looked around on eBay uh, for a fishing controller and with shipping, I think the cheapest one I could find was like $30, which come on. And so I, I peeled the price tag off already, but I got this at the digital press store for $12.99, which good deal. So this was, it's funny. This is the one thing I forgot to show, uh, because this was the thing I was the most excited about. I haven't even cleaned it up yet and tested it. So hopefully it works. The girl's like, Oh, are, are you familiar with our return policy? And I was like, I, I live in California. So it's, you know, she's like, well, I guess you could mail it back to us. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to roll the dice. You know, if it doesn't work 
and I can't fix it, I'll just chuck it, you know? I'm not gonna put this in the mail so I can have my 13 bucks back. But anyway, Dreamcast Fishing Controller, uh, that'd be a cool stream, I think. But I only have the one game, so I'd have to get at least one more. There was like three games, right? There was Sega Bass Fishing, Sega Marine Fishing, and then I think one of those two games had a sequel, I forgot which one. But uh, that might be, you know what we should do? I, I kept saying I was gonna do the golf uh, uh, stream. We should just do a boring games that'll put most people to sleep stream. Like I'll play golf and then fish. It'll be, hey, it'll be the classic gaming quarterly retirement stream. Uh, and that way, at least people who don't care can just not watch that one. So anyway, Ryan, uh, Ryan was supposed to come to the show and at the last minute, he had to work that day and didn't get to go. So I felt bad for Ryan. So hey, uh, Ryan gets a shout out. Hopefully that makes you feel better. Uh, Dreamcast fishing control. And then uh, the last thing, that uh, they had, so up at the cash register, they had like some old, like like boxes of old trading cards. And some of them weren't even games related, but uh, they did have a whole box of these Nintendo game packs. So um, I bought, do I have some of these sealed already? I'm gonna say we should open these right now. Well, how about, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open one and I'm gonna leave one sealed to put up here on the shelf. So these are like these scratch off cards. And uh, before anybody asks, there's no gum. Although these are made by tops. So yeah, three scratch off cards and two stickers. And this is just one of those things. They made so many of these that you can still get them uh, sealed. And these were these were $1.99 a package. So they weren't too cheap. I bought four packs, but I, did I say that already? I bought four packs, but I gave two packs to Smoke Monster. Um. So, uh, yeah, so here's the three cards. And again, like I said, they're scratch off cards. I don't even know if you could still scratch them off. We can try, but I'll just show them first. So there's a Zelda one. Here's an Adventure of Link one. And here's a Super Mario 2. one. And what they are is they're like games. Um, yeah, see it says scratch off the first area until you uncover the arrow to advance then proceed to the next scratch off area You can't win unless both arrow and tosses are uncovered Finally scratch off the circle over princess toadstool. Congratulations. So I, I don't know do we, I don't I don't really want to scratch these just because I don't really see the point uh, And then it comes with some stickers So this is the kind of thing you would have gotten these when you were a kid and stuck these on like your school binder or, uh, you know, your trapper keeper, or, you know, if you had a TV in your room, or maybe you'd stick them right on your Nintendo Entertainment System or whatever. So, yeah, so there's two stickers with Link. And then here's just some rando stuff from uh, from Super Mario Brothers. So, um, so yeah, that's it. Oh, and I, oh, I did save, I saved my little pass thing uh, from the show. See, mine says guest on it. So I got, I made a joke. Uh, when he gave me this, I'm like, oh, does this get me into the VIP bathroom? And then it turned out that there actually was a VIP bathroom. Uh, not VIP, but it was just for uh, volunteers and guests. So I, this, you know, I know I'm weird, but like I had this whole thing of like, I don't want to be in the bathroom peeing at a urinal and have somebody trying to tell me how much they like my show. You know, like I just, I'd rather pee in private. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I think that's it. Um. I don't really have anything else. I mean, I've probably picked up a few things at video game stores or something, but probably nothing noteworthy. So, um, so yeah, so today's Wednesday, the 11th. Uh, this show probably is not going to make it out today. It'll probably be out tomorrow, I'm guessing. Um, but then tomorrow night, so Thursday the 12th, uh, I'm doing a live stream with the Sega Genesis Mini because they, they sent me one to do a live stream with. It's not sponsored or anything, but they did give me a free console. So, um, it's like the least I can do, but that way we'll check it out. But I mean, it's going to be an honest sort of impression, maybe not really a review, but an impression of the thing. Uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not being paid or anything. And they didn't give me like talking points. I just, they gave it to me to play with you guys. So that's what we're going to do. So, which I was going to do anyway, I had one pre-ordered and then Sega wanted to send me one. So I said, okay, and I canceled my pre-order. So, uh, so yeah, that's going to do it, I guess, for this episode. Uh, I will try to get the next flashback out soon. Again, just because of the Dreamcast launch episode, I just did not have the time 
to to work on a a, a flashback. And this next episode for a flashback is like for me going to be kind of a big episode. I feel like for you guys, it's not you know it might have limited appeal, but it's one that I've been looking forward to talking about just because there's a lot of good memories for me uh, tied up in that one. So uh, keep an eye out for that uh, and the live stream tomorrow. So that'll do it for this episode of CGQ Plus. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.